Hello. Howdy, howdy. Ready to get started? I am ready. Sounds good. All right. Well, first of all, I'll say I'm Michelle Ricketts. I'm your moderator today, and I'll be assisting Lori, and it's great to have you here. We're going to just start with a little introduction with, about Lori Osborne. So Lori is a mother and wife and lives in Florida. She's founder and chief solution architect for Biz Bolster Web Solutions. She's got great experience, over 20 years experience in working with small business and 30 years in information and technology. She is a rock star and she's owned her own business for more than 15 years. So I'll turn the floor over to Lori and let's see what we're going to learn about SEO for small business. All right. Lori. Welcome, everybody. It is so great to see you. Um, and just to clarify, I'm, I'm a mother of fur babies. Oh, just fur babies. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. My bad. My bad. <laughs> no problem at all. But yes, welcome. It is so great to see you guys. Um, and I just realized, okay, here we go. Didn't have my notes up. So I um, want to kind of get a feel of who we've got here. Um, have you ever felt like it's just crickets when it comes to your website? Um, drop a note in the chat if you feel like, yeah, you know, I've got this website, but I'm not showing up on search engines or I'm showing up on Google, but I'm not on that first page and I have no idea why. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat if you if you feel like that's you. And if you do feel like that's you, you're in the right place because that's what we're going to talk about today. That's that is SEO, search engine optimization, where you show up in searches. And that might make get you to the point of asking, but okay, I know you say SEO, people say SEO, search engine optimization all the time, but what does that really mean? I mean, it's it sounds really complicated, and I'll tell you it is, <laughs> it's very complicated, but it is basically the strategies put in place for your website to show up on search engines. And we're gonna specifically talk mostly about Google today, but it's all search engines. And then it's the next steps of making sure that you show up higher on the list than your competitors. That's all it is. From a big picture perspective, SEO is just getting you seen in searches. Specifically, we're going to talk about Google. And to do that, there are some key basic strategies that we're going to go over. But first, I want to, um, oops, sorry, hit the wrong button. Bear with me, please. Getting used to this uh, here. Okay. I want to say thank you to Charmaine and Angels Are Networking for asking me to speak here today. Um, this is a great honor. It's a great summit. Um, I can already tell that um, there's going to be some wonderful things. Like I'm personally having a hard time deciding which session to go to. So um, it's going to be a fantastic event. I know that Charmaine and the Angels have worked their tails off making this happen. So I'm glad you're here as well. Thank you for selecting my presentation to attend. Um, I hope to fill you with great information that you don't have and some wonderful takeaways that you can apply um, down the road in your business. Oops. So let's jump in. First, I want to ask, and, I'm, and you might be asking as well, why, why do we care? Why do we even worry about digital marketing, our websites, and SEO? And maybe that's maybe a dumb question, especially in COVID times. During the last year and a half, we've all really come to realize the importance of being online and being a virtual business and able to provide services to others without having to be in person. And because of that, we've, we have to look at having good websites and having good SEO. Don't know if you know this, but according to Digital Commerce 360, you'll see on your screen, um, e-commerce grew 44% in 2020 over previous years. 44%. That is pretty significant. It's also true, according to Google, that there are over 200 million active websites across the world. Um, there's billions as far as websites, but 200 million active websites. So that's what you're competing with when trying to get attention when searches are done. 
Now, obviously, you're not competing with all 200 million, but just think about that in terms of maybe you have 15 competitors and they're all on the web as well that you're competing with. So it's really important that you are at the top of your game and that we get your SEO up there to where you show up when you should. And I'm going to tell you, I mentioned a second ago that SEO is complex. It truly is. In the world of digital marketing, SEO and improving your search results is definitely one of the more complicated things that we do in digital marketing. But the good news is there are several simple things that you can do and that we're going to talk about today that you can apply to get the ball rolling. The other thing to keep in mind is it takes time. Most SEO practices take at least three to six months to really make a difference. So as you start the SEO process, try to be patient and recognize that it's not going to be an overnight thing. You can do all these things today and it probably will not mean that tomorrow you're going to show up immediately in those searches. The World Wide Web is just that. It is a worldwide web. It's large. There's a lot that takes place. Even when we just set up a website, there's like 30 servers that has to be told that you even exist. The other thing to keep in mind is you cannot buy good SEO. There is not any amount of money that anybody can spend that will guarantee that they're going to be at the top without applying specific SEO strategies. Even the top companies like Amazon even the top companies like Google. Google has over 7,000 websites that they directly handle within their company. And I read recently by one of their SEO experts that they don't even guarantee that they can make them, they can't put themselves at the top. They have to apply these strategies in order to be at the top too. So recognize that it's not as easy as just, you know, dropping a check for 10 or $20,000 or 10 or $20 million to get to the top. You have to apply the specifics and understand Google algorithms so that you can work within those parameters that Google has out there. The other thing to remember is it's not as simple as build it and they will come. And what I mean by that is I have too many people I encounter that, that think once we just make their website live, it's going to just show up on searches. It doesn't work that way. You have to do the work on the SEO side to be seen. So again, that's what we're going to talk about today, and let's jump in. So the first thing we have to do is let Google know that you're there. And the first way to do that is through Google My Business. That's the little piece that shows up when you do a search on a business and it comes up with all this information. That's Google My Business. And that's where you verify your address to Google so they know who you are, that you're in the United States. It's got the full business information about you, your hours your location if you're a brick and mortar. And by the way, once that location's verified, you don't have to have it visible to the world. You just have to tell Google where you're at. Um, your pictures that you put out there, um, keywords, your reviews, and postings. Now, not everybody knows this, but Google My Business does allow you to do posting and add images, which is huge because it's like a whole other social media platform. And it's where most people go to find businesses. So keep that in mind when you're doing social media. I'm going to throw in a little tip here too. Social Pilot is what we use for our social media posting. And I chose that because Google My Business is one of the companies listed that we can post directly to using Social Pilot. So there's a plug in for them. The other tools to consider are Google Analytics and Google Search Console. So Google Analytics is what you sign up for that runs on the back end. We put a code on your website and it works within Google to tell you, well, to, to, yeah, to give you the data of the traffic to your website, where it comes from, how it works. It's the whole analytics piece. So you sign up for that and that's what gives you the data. And then the search console is, let me go back a second. So the way Google works, how, how does this whole thing work? Kind of missed this, sorry. Google has like this big virtual filing cabinet that we all go into that, you know, the, all the websites get into this filing cabinet from this Google My Business. Search Console takes a site map from your website, gives it to Google, Google indexes it, and that's what puts your information in the files within that filing cabinet that Google has. 
so that they can be instantly pulled when someone does a search that applies. So the indexing part is key because it means Google has run through your website and post and put all this information in their files so that you can later be found. So that is just as critical as the other tools and often overlooked. The other thing is Google looks for current relevant data. They want, and, and let me tell you right now, what I mean by that is not that you go in and you change a sentence in your keywords or a paragraph on your website. That's not enough. We mean significant changes, things like blogs, podcasts, your videos, your images, constant, current, relevant data is what Google wants to present to the world. They do not want static websites that never change. Those are not going to show up higher on the list. So I want to go back just a little bit um, to what I was talking about a minute ago with Google My Business being like a social media platform. So one of the things that I love about Google My Business are images. And when I look at images, I'm looking at your website and those helping your um, SEO, but also on Google My Business itself, because you can actually post images out there in addition to posts. So I want to show you some results of doing this. So this um, top part of this slide is a client of mine, Yard Card Supply. And they supply yard cards, like in the uh, top left here, to yard card companies around the country. You might notice here in the bottom left of each picture, it shows you how many views there have been. The first one is over 19,000 views of that image. The next one is over 20,000 views of that image. And the third one is over 65,000 views of that image. So just think about that. 65,000 people are seeing this picture and what's the most logical next step they're going to do? They're gonna to go to the website. They're gonna go check out what's this all about. So this is so key. If you're putting those images out there, it just helps. It's another step to just help build that SEO. And then the bottom of this slide is another client of mine, Dr. Kimberly Ann. She is a holistic psychologist and she started a podcast earlier this year. And she set it up on a third party platform, but we didn't just leave it there. We took her, her um, session notes. She takes all of her sessions, puts them in full notes, full, chopped full of keywords. Well, then we put those session notes on her website. So here she has this third party tool that's driving SEO back to her website. And then she's got the ses session notes. She started that podcast in April. Notice here, her website traffic has increased by over 200% since April just because of her podcasts. It's incredible. So these are some two, two things I highly recommend you do to improve your SEO. The next thing that Google looks at, and let me mention here, um, I talk a lot about Google algorithms. Well, Google did a major update to their algorithms in May of this year. And one of the things they did was they emphasized more than ever before user experience. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today are around that user experience. And one of those things is website speed. They don't want a website that's going to be low, slow to load. If you take 10 seconds for the website to come up, you are going to lose that person that's on there that has a three seconds in terms of um, paying attention. So you've got to keep the website speed intact. Now, bear in mind, most of our websites today are on platforms, Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, any of them. There's not a lot you can do on the behind the scenes without custom code. So just be aware of that. So let's focus on the things we can control. Two of the big things are images and videos because they are dense and heavy in terms of size and they can pull down the speed on your website. So I highly recommend on images that you um, crop them, sorry, that you reduce their size. Um, most images, when they come off a camera or a phone, they can be as much as 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. That's a very large file. We usually cut our images down in size, down to around under 200, 2,000 by 2,000, around 1,500 typically. 
you just want to cut it down, but you don't want to lose the quality. So if you start seeing a loss in quality, then you don't want to cut it down that much. And usually under about a meg per picture. And I do this across all of my websites and I do not notice a difference in most, most images quality. And then there's videos. Videos, as you know, are also very large in size and can really bog down a website. I discourage you from loading videos directly to your website for this reason. You can store them on Vimeo or YouTube and then direct them to your website with, through links. Now, I personally encourage YouTube, if you don't mind the advertising and the automatic you know, next company showing up, because it's also owned by Google and it will work together with your website, again, to build that SEO. The next thing that we're going to talk about are the other key factors that come up um, from Google's updates and their algorithms. And one of those is what I said before, the user friendliness. So this, in addition to speed, this means how easy is it to read your text? Is anything going off the screen, either in any desktop mode, which there's lots of different desktop sizes, um, in your mobile version, or even in your, um, like an iPad type version. So it's really important that on all of those platforms that everything can be easily read, that nothing's going off the screen, that you can see the images, and you know that everything performs properly. Your buttons work, your buttons can be seen, all of that good stuff. The next thing is being optimized for mobile. So that means taking your desktop version and making it be properly seen on a mobile platform. Many of the uh, platforms out there will do this for you automatically. I should say many. Squarespace is the only one I know of that really does it automatically. All the other ones require tweaking when you get to that mobile version. And some even require full on development in the mobile version for it to look right. So make sure you're not just developing a website or having someone develop a website on a desktop platform and not dealing with that mobile version as well. The next thing is security. Security is huge. You must have an SSL certificate and that little lock in the top left of your URL. So it's HTTPS for security. Most of the platforms out there do this automatically. WordPress does not, and it is where I see the most problems. I cannot believe the number of websites I see that are not secure. It's 200 bucks. You can do it through your web developer or your host. Just get it done. I mean, this is honestly something you can do today. If you don't have HTTPS, get it done today. It will affect your SEO. And it's amazing how many people can't even access non-secure sites anymore. The next thing we're going to talk about is reviews. Reviews also have a great impact on your SEO. Google loves current positive reviews, as do your consumers. I mean, reviews establish your credibility with the rest of the world. Reviews tell the story of who you are and give you that um, social proof of who you are and what you do and how you do it. So I want to kind of read some stats here from a 2020 consumer review study. 79% of consumers trust online reviews as much as recommendations from friends and family. That is gigantic. One review could be like 10 people referring you. 87% of consumers in 2020 read online reviews before they made purchases. 87%. 73% of consumers only pay attention to reviews written in the last month. So here we go with the current relevant data. And only 48% of consumers would consider using a business with fewer than four stars. So again, positive reviews. And I'm just going to mention here that BizBolster, we do have a signature program for review management called Bolster Reviews. The link is on your screen, bolsterreviews.com, where we automate and improve the overall um, gathering and posting of your reviews. We manage that for you. We also do uh, responses for you because those are so important as well. So take a look if you might be interested. And then the, um, oh, it looks like I, sorry, I missed something on that last screen. I accidentally went back. I'll, I'll come back to that ADA compliance. 
So then I want to show you here. This is one of our customers that um, we signed up for um, the Postal Reviews in August. And you can see just looking at the end of August through today, the gradual and sometimes um, large increase in um, traffic on their website. And it may not all be from Bolster Reviews, but it can be definitely something that would make a difference. So I'm going to mention here just real quick too the um, ADA piece that I had on the other slide. Um, I've been very involved with ADA lately because of a government project I'm working on. And, you know, I went into it thinking that, you know, I was doing the bulk of the things for ADA and, and found that there's there's so much more. But what I want to say is what I learned from that is good ADA also improves your SEO because ADA is all around user friendliness. If you have folks that can't see well or can't hear and can't navigate and you're addressing that through your website, that is improving your user friendliness and improving the overall experience, therefore improving your SEO. So just bear in mind when you're looking at the size of fonts, the colors, you know, think about even colorblind people, like be careful with your blues and greens and those type of things that might be hard to see. Make sure your links have words, not just a link so that someone can know what that link is to. Um, hello, am I? You all right, Lori? Yeah. I'm hearing Charmaine in my ear. Are you guys hearing Charmaine? No, we're not hearing her. You keep going, oh. you're doing amazing. Okay, I apologize. I've got Charmaine going in my ear and I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> All right. So, I apologize. I must have something else open on your. Yep. Okay. I apologize. I just got that fixed. Sorry. I thought you guys could hear that too. And it kind of freaked me out. Okay. <laughs> so, and first I thought it was you telling me I was almost out of time. All right. So, I want to know if you guys have any idea where you show up on search engines kind of drop in the chat if um if you've if you've gone out and looked do you have any idea and do you know if you show up on the first page and i kind of want to mention here that if you're going to look make sure you use an incognito window because your um browser has a memory we know that and it knows where you've been even when you've cleared history so use an incognito window but no, still, even if you're not seeing the results, the really the best way to know if your SEO is is working at all is through a full analysis of your SEO. And that is something that we're going to provide for you. So I'm going to go here to the next slide and talk to you about our specials. So part of what we're going to do for you, um, if you go out to our website and we'll give you that information here in a second, is we will do a full free SEO analysis. And we're also going to allow you to do a download of our free SEO tips, which are 10 things that I did not cover all of today that you can do yourself or through your web developer to improve your SEO. And then additionally, I am offering $50 off our Google tool setup. So this is a $447 offer normally. So now that you understand the importance of SEO, and the importance of having good SEO on your website, you might wanna check out the adding of these tools that we talked about in the beginning. Those are the key things to letting Google know that you exist and how you can be found in that big old virtual filing cabinet of theirs. So I normally charge $447, which is a great value, but we are taking $50 off today. And in addition to the tools that we set up, we do the full analysis, and we do the basics on your website to make sure like your keywords are there and your alt text is there and the things are there for your website to function properly through the beginnings of your new SEO process. Also, if you're interested, I have got an opt-in package that will help you. Um, we will help you set up a freebie on your website for someone to be able to um, download that and improve your list because the holidays are coming and you are going to want people to be able to receive emails from you with your holiday specials. So you need to start collecting those emails now. And then I'm also giving a couple of discounts on Bolster Reviews if you find you're interested. All of these offers can be found 
at bizbolster.com forward slash angels, which I believe we are dropping in the chat as well. So where do you go from here? First, implement the changes that we've talked about today. Security number one, please. If anyone does not have your certificate, please make sure that's taken care of. Remember that SEO takes time and patience and consistency. You've got to stick with it. You've got to keep working it. And if you can manage it, I highly recommend that you invest in some extended SEO work to um, improve your SEO even more. Also encourage you to take advantage of our specials. These are great deals that will help you out today. And then if you want to discuss more advanced strategies um, or anything else around SEO, you can schedule a breakthrough session with me um, at bizbolster.com forward slash connect. So that's what I've got for you guys. I did not leave as much time as I wanted, but I would love to hear if anybody has any questions. Please drop yes. those in the chat. We did have a couple of questions. I want to go back to Dawn. Dawn Durrell was asking about how to, he's having problems getting video up on his website. Can you speak to that, Lori? Um, or did, sorry, do we on have any Google My Business, sorry, on his Google My Business site. Okay. Um, with Google My Business, you do, and, and you know, I have not done it Um we were just talking about the other day. You do have to have a link. You can't put a video directly to Google My Business. So you would want to do it out to YouTube. And I believe that you can do a link to it um, that way. Excellent. I've done, Excellent. I focus more on images. So apologize. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and Misty was also asking, can you give any insight into doing a site map? Yes. Most platforms automatically create a site map. And it's usually your URL and then um, sitemap.xml. If you just do a search uh, for what is what is my sitemap or in your help for that platform, then it will tell you. And I have never had to create a sitemap. If you do have to, if you are on a platform that does not provide a sitemap automatically, there are sites out there where you can go out and create. And I would just do a Google search. How do I create a free sitemap? And you want a .xml. Excellent. And that'll work with WordPress or where, whatever they're using. It'll be the same, Lori, right? Yes. yes. Excellent. Excellent. So and I, so I've got a question for you. The, the, when I was chatting with someone about Google My Business, one of the things that they suggested was not putting everything up all at once. You want to have your main stuff, but you want to add over time. Can you speak to that a bit? Kind of goes back to what I was saying about consistent, current, relevant data. And this applies to reviews as well. Like you do, you don't want to go out and do a dump to a thousand people at once asking for reviews, really even a hundred at once asking for reviews because Google gets suspicious. Algorithms get suspicious, um, but it's all around current data. So I would not put everything out there at once. I would start with your banner, your logo, and maybe five pictures, all of your basic information, and then we include it as part of our social media process. So when we have something that we feel like will help someone or when I do a new website or anything that would make sense to be on Google, if you've got an image heavy business, you know, when there's new things, you want to post them out there. But the main thing is that it's current and relevant and consistent. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I think, Lori, we've given an amazing amount of information. I even learned some things today and Good. I can Google my business. So that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. SEO is so, so important. Um, and we've, we've had a great group that's joined us. We're going to thank them for that. Make sure that you're wanting to see our next session. If we start starting right now with our keynote speaker, Justin Bellababa, if I hopefully I've said that right. <laughs> featuring now site featuring CRM, social media, AI, newsletters, email, SMS, campaigns, and networking. And stay around for networking later on, but join Justin in his session. And thank you much so much, Lori Osborne, showing us and giving us great info on SEO. Thank you. And please go out to the website and sign up for those freebies. Excellent. Have so a great day, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.